This premium entry level espresso machine features best in class steaming power. Desirable features like a three way solenoid valve, massive three liter water reservoir, heavyweight angled portafilter, and it's made by a company that's been perfecting their machines for more than a century. Hey, espresso lovers, Mark here from Whole Latte Love. Today, an in depth look at the Bezzera Hobby. Along the way, all the details, and I'll show you how to make two lattes at the same time. The Hobby comes in stainless steel, black, and this incredible red, which is my personal favorite. Really, very stunning. If you've been considering, say, a Ranchilio Silvia, I really want you to stick with me and get the details on Bedzera's Hobby. It's in the same price range as a Silvia, but in my opinion, beats the Silvia soundly in a number of key performance areas. Coming up, specific details on that, including steam performance testing for the Hobby compared to other premium entry level machines, including the Silvia. Now, like the Silvia, the Bedzera Hobby is a single boiler machine, so the same boiler heats water for brewing and steaming. The Hobby uses a quarter liter nickel plated brass boiler powered by an 1100 watt heating element. That's about 100 watts more than in the Sylvia, and as we'll see in a minute, gets you dramatically faster times for heating up to steam ready. The huge three liter water reservoir is accessible under a hinged flap and gives you 35% more capacity than the 2.2 liters in the Sylvia. Fill at the machine or it can be removed for filling. Up front, a cup warming surface catches passive boiler heat. Internals are easily accessed by removing these two hex head screws. There are four commercial grade rocker switches up front, the main power switch, switch for the pump, the brew switch, and a steam switch. After turning on the main power, the hobby indicates it's heated up and ready to brew when the green light illuminates. To get steam, push the steam switch, and the green light goes out and comes back on when the boiler has reached full steaming temperature. The dedicated pump switch is a feature I love. For hot water, for Americanos, tea, or other uses, just open the steam valve and press the switch. After steaming milk on single boiler machines, you should always cool down and refill the boiler. To do that on the hobby, turn the steam switch off, open the steam valve, and turn the pump on. You just let that run until a solid stream of water is coming out of the wand. Once the green light comes back on, you're ready to brew another espresso. So let's make a couple of lattes. Now I previously dialed in my coffee on Bedzera's BB005 grinder. More details on this very affordable machine grade grinder in an upcoming video. Before grinding, I had the empty portafilter warming in the group. The Hobby's portafilter is angled and that's a rare feature in entry level machines. The angle makes tamping easier by keeping the portafilter parallel to your countertop. Now, I usually use a leveler, but many of you are tamping, so I wanted to show off this wood handled tamper with the Bedzera logo embossed into the wood. As my machine has been sitting idle for a while, I'm gonna give it a very short flush to check for and clear any overheated brew water from the group. The angled portafilter makes locking into the group a more ergonomically easy endeavor. Press the brew switch and place two six ounce cups under the spouts. While the shots are running, I'll fill a frothing pitcher with about eight ounces of milk. I'll let the shots run until I've got an ounce or so in each cup. As soon as the shots are done, I'll press the steam switch. While the hobby is heating up the steam temp, here's a look at how the hobby compares in steaming performance to other machines. As you can see here, it's about 40 seconds faster to steam ready than the Sylvia. Now, if you're frothing on a regular basis, that extra time, it's really gonna add up. And it's got a lot of steam power, leading all the machines here at just 14 seconds to steam five ounces of milk to a finish temp of 140 degrees. And here's a little tip. With most any single boiler machine, with a true boiler like the Hobby, you can start steaming before the machine indicates it's reached full steaming temperature. And that's what I'm gonna do here. It takes some practice to know when there's enough steam built up, but doing so can help keep the heating element on longer and generating more steam. So a quick purge to remove condensation, place the tip just below the surface of the milk and turn the steam on. 
I'll keep this tip position constant relative to the milk surface until I'm satisfied with the amount of air added. Now, usually that's about the time the outside of my pitcher just starts to feel warm. Once there, I'll lower the tip a bit deeper into the milk and find a wand angle which causes the milk to roll. This breaks up any larger bubbles and helps create a fine, uniform texture to the milk. I'll continue heating until the outside of the pitcher is just nearing the point where it's too hot to hold. Then I'll cut the steam, remove the pitcher, then purge and wipe down the wand. After that, turn off the steam switch. Open the valve and turn on the pump until a solid stream of water comes out of the wand. Doing this cools down and refills the boiler. Now, if needed, I can give my milk pitcher a few knocks and swirls to break up large bubbles and keep the texture uniform. Then just pour over the espresso in each cup. Now, I'm no latte artist, but art or not, good espresso and finely frothed milk add up to a latte with great taste and incredibly good mouthfeel. Now, one key feature you'll find in premium entry-level machines like the Hobby is a three-way solenoid valve. At the end of an extraction, the valve opens and removes excess water from the coffee puck, making it dry and easy to knock out. The Hobby has a really cool setup that routes that excess water up through the bottom of the drip tray. Now, if you've ever used an entry-level espresso appliance, you know they leave behind a soupy, hard-to-deal-with mess of water and coffee grounds in their pressurized portafilters. Knocking dry pucks out of machines with a three-way solenoid valve like the Hobby is a much cleaner and more satisfying experience. For all its steaming power and that large water reservoir, the Hobby is a very compact machine, a bit smaller than the Gaja Classic Pro, much smaller than the Silvia and the ECM Casa. In the box with the Hobby is a double spout portafilter, single and double shot filter baskets, a back flush disc, and group brush to help keep things clean. But Zara has been building and improving espresso machines for more than a century. I've been to their modern production facility in Milan where they make more of their own parts for their machines than any other manufacturer. And that logo with a snake? Well, in Milan two years ago, I found its inspiration at this castle. But Zara created the hobby about a decade ago as a direct competitor to the Ranchilio Silvia. While the Silvia is a much loved machine with a dedicated user base, I believe the hobby has more to offer with that better steaming performance, full stainless steel build, an angled portafilter, larger water capacity, more compact design, and higher capacity in the drip tray. The Bezzera Hobby is available now at Whole Latte Love in the original stainless steel, the black, and of course, my favorite, the stunning red. If you have any questions on the Hobby or anything coffee, use those comments and I'd be happy to get you a detailed answer. Of course, you can always speak directly with one of our coffee experts. Contact info for that, that's linked down in the description. Now, if you haven't already, why not subscribe to the channel? I'm Mark, thanks for watching, and I hope you'll come back soon for more of the best on everything coffee, brought to you by Whole Latte Love.